Okay, so let's move on to making the antenna. So I'm just using that other half of the pipe cleaner that we um, cut off earlier on when we were making the body of our snail. And I'm folding it down the middle and I'm just gonna cut that in half using my wire cutters and discard one of those pieces. So we're left with um, another half and I'm just going to fold that dead center down the middle again, getting a nice clean bend in the middle. And I'm gonna take the wire cutters again and I'm just going to snip that down the middle too. So we've got two roughly equal halves and these are going to form our antenna for our snail. So the next thing I need to do is I'm just going to fold over the end probably by about a centimetre so you haven't got a sharp edge and I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the other half. And then what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to measure that to see roughly how long that is. Ideally, we're looking for the antennas to be about an inch long. So that's about an inch and a half. So it's a bit too long. So I'm just going to take my snail and just have a look at that. And yeah, I think it looks a bit too long. So I'm just going to take my wire cutters. I'm going to snip off about half an inch, a centimetre, half an inch off the bottoms. Do the same on the other side. Just check that they're matching, they look about right. And I'm just going to refold that one again just to make sure that they're the same size. And yeah, that's about an inch in length now. So that's about what we're looking for. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take some purple wool bats. You don't want to use merino here. Bats is a much more forgiving wool because we're going to be wrapping this bats around our pipe cleaner antenna. And it'll be much easier for you to wrap with the wool bats rather than with a merino roving. So the piece I have here is quite long. It's quite thin, but it's probably about an inch in width. And like we have done in the past, I'm just going to wrap that around nice and tightly, keeping my fingers nice and close to the wall so it doesn't tear off. And once I get to the top, I'm going to take it about a millimetre past the tip, and then I'm just going back over in the direction that we started. So you should have a nice thick antenna, and I'm going to go for about three wraps around the antenna to get the thickness I need. And then I'm just going to go back up again. Wrapping up to the top. And I'm just going to tear away that excess. I'm just going to fold that over and then I'm just going to felt that down so it can't unravel. So you've got three wraps there that I've um, wrapped over the pipe cleaner. So we've gone over three times with our wall bats. So I'm just going to very lightly stab that down. I'm not going down too deeply because all that will happen is I'll felt the antenna into the mat. And I don't want to do that because then you'll end up with lots of bits of the wool pulled on one side. So I'm just very lightly felting it down to make sure it doesn't unravel. I'm just going over any areas that might be a bit loose. Obviously always making sure that I'm careful of my fingers and obviously you can use your finger gloves for this just to make sure you don't accidentally stab yourself. Holding it well into the mat as well. Sometimes these can be a bit tricky because they have a tendency to roll away so just put quite a bit of pressure on them so they can't do that and you'll make life a lot easier for yourself that way. Okay so that looks good to me. I'm just going to check that on our snail I'm just going to fold that top half over and then position it roughly where I want it. And I'm happy with that. That looks like a good length. So I'm just going to speed things up now and I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the other pipe cleaner. So I'm starting about a centimetre down from the top, folding all the way down past the end, about a, a millimetre past the end, then back to the top and then back down again. And we want to go past the end and you'll see why in a moment. I'm just going to felt that down first of all and ensure that that's not going to unravel. Again, nice light stabs. And I should say I'm using my fine needles here to do this. And just very careful when you're stabbing the top half of the antenna. 
I'm just rolling it over I'm just making sure I felt it down any loose areas again so nothing's going to unravel once I've done that I'm just going to check it on the snail to make sure it's the right size I'm just going to give it a roll with my fingers as well and muddle those fibers together bend down that end and I'm just going to hold those into place that looks pretty good to me so the next thing we need to do is we need to attach these to the head of our snail so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my embroidery scissors and I'm just going to snip those loose ends where it's gone over past the pipe cleaner I'm going to do three snips equal of equal distance away so the snips are about a millimeter in maybe two millimeters in length so you end up with these kind of little tabs that can splay out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to splay the tabs out against the head and then using my single medium twisted star needle it's very difficult to see here because my fingers are in the way but I'm just felting down against those tabs felting downwards And you need to be quite patient with this and obviously very careful that you don't accidentally stab yourself. So I'm just holding the top of the antenna so my fingers are out of the way and I'm just felting around the bottom area, felting the wool downwards, especially those tabs that we've made, into the head of our snail. And I've got them sat together quite closely but if you wanted to, you could have them a little bit more separate so they're kind of more sort of central behind the eye so there's a bit more of a gap there but I've just kind of decided to go with them right next to each other and I'm just going to go around the back and give them a felt around the back area as well and you know you want to go relatively deeply with this but not ever so deeply you want to go deeply enough that you can feel it penetrating into the the flesh colored wall that we've already added to the body of our snail so I'm just felting both of them now around the eye area, always going downwards to make sure that they're nice and secure and they're not going to easily fall off or be easily pulled off by small fingers. So I'm just going to give that a bit more of a stab. And just keep going until you're happy. I like to give them a bit of a tug just to make sure that they're not really going anywhere. And the nice thing with doing it like this as well is that you've got the, the wire in the middle so they're poseable so you can kind of bend them into, into any shape you want um, for your snail's antenna. It makes it quite fun. So you could make them a lot more, if you wanted to, you could make them longer and then you could make um, more of a rounded bend that kind of goes in on itself. So that looks good, I'm happy with that. So the next thing we're going to do is make the shell. And you can see there those antenna are lovely and secure. And they look a little bit like eyebrows as well. They kind of double up. I'm just going to bring them up a little bit. Let's move on to making the shell. So this time I'm taking the second pipe cleaner. I'm not going to cut it in half this time. We're keeping its length. So we want it to be about 20 centimeters in length 20 inches in length I should say and the piece of wool that we're using is probably about 22 inches in length so I've taken a slither of this wool so it's about an inch in width possibly about an inch and a half in width I'm starting in the middle it's difficult to see so I've gone off camera a little bit here and I'm just starting to wrap that all the way to one end of our snail shell and like we did when we made the body earlier on we want to keep it nice and tight and if it starts to twist you want to make sure that you're unraveling it so you're keeping everything nice and flush with each other you haven't got any twists that make the snail shell uneven so just keep untwisting if it starts to twist on itself so I'm going past the end of the pipe cleaner and then bringing that wall back in on itself 
So I'm using the um, the fox sheep wool here. Uh, however, you can use any wool bats if you want to. Any core wool bats will work for this. It doesn't have to be the fox sheep. I've chosen the fox sheep because I like it. It's got a lo lovely lofty feel to it and it's very easy to get a good felt on it very quickly. But you don't have to use this. Any core wool will, will do. And you can even use um, a Shetland white core wool as well. That also works really well and is really lofty for doing this kind of work. So I'm just going to keep twisting this all the way to the end. And this won't need a huge amount of felting with the needles initially. So we just want to get that wool onto the, onto the pipe cleaner first of all. So I'm just going to twist those last few ends over. And I'm not even going to felt this down at the moment. I'm just going to leave it like that because the fox sheep has a lovely Velcro quality to it so it sticks to itself. And then I'm going to take my next piece of core wool, exactly the same or roughly the same width again. And this, it's taken from the same length, so it should be roughly the same length as the first piece. And I'm just going to wrap that round in the same way that we did with the first one. So starting in the middle, wrapping it all the way down to one end and then going back on yourself. What you're looking for with this is to have one end slightly thinner than the other end and the other end to be quite thick because when we come to roll the snail shell we want to create that kind of snail shell shape that um, people notice um, and identify with when they when they look at a snail. So just continue, continuing to twist. Don't worry if it's looking slightly uneven. Once we've got it all on we'll use our felting needles and we'll get that evenness back so obviously you want to keep untwisting it because if you don't untwist it you'll end up with a very lumpy finish um, but um, as long as you keep untwisting once you felt with the needles you'll get a lovely smooth finish to this so don't worry if it's a bit rough and ready at the moment so I'm just going to keep twisting that right until I run out of wool and once I get to the end, I'm just going to stab that into place. Make sure it can't unravel. Again, I'm using my, my fine twisted needles here. Giving it a good stab. I'm just going to go round the areas of the, the snail shell that are a lot looser and just give it more of an even appearance as it goes down the pipe cleaner. So this can take a few minutes but just take your time and again you don't need to go really deep with these just take them about a couple of millimetres into the wall. You need to be careful because remember that pipe cleaner is in the middle and you don't want to break your nail, um, your, your needles. So just be cautious of the pipe cleaner in the middle of the, of the wall at this stage. So I'm going to take my third piece of wool and I've sped things up for you. And again, exactly the same thing. And you can keep going for as long as you want to really. Um, but obviously you want the snail shell to kind of look like it's the right size on the body of the snail that you've created. So if it's too small, it might look a bit odd. And again, if it's too large, it might look a bit odd. So you don't want to go sort of too under or too overboard. But having said that, you know, just kind of go with what you think. So I've run out, as you, what you'll find is I'm using the same length of wool as I was earlier on, but as it's getting thicker, my wool's running out a lot more quickly sort of down the sort of the middle of the, of the snail shell. So I'm just going to give that another stab with my needles, make sure it's nice and even. And then we're going to add another piece of wool on in a second. And it's quite satisfying as you get it thicker and thicker and you can really see it starting to take shape and then the most exciting bit is when you've finished making the shell and then you can add the colour and choosing sort of a lovely vivid colour is great fun when you're making these snails 
So what I'm doing this time is I'm starting from the middle again, but I'm twisting the wool down on the opposite end. And that's just to make sure that whilst I want one end to be thicker, um, both sides are kind of getting roughly the same amount of wool at the moment. And then we can concentrate on making things slightly, slightly thicker on one end once we've kind of got to where we want to with the thinner part of our snail shell. So giving that another stab. Just be patient with it really. Once you've made one, making more will be super easy. And you can even make smaller ones that you could hang on the Christmas tree, which would be really good fun. And you could make a little Christmas hat for them. Or you could have them in the garden in the summertime if you wanted to. Obviously felt doesn't take too well to kind of the elements but on a nice sunny day you could kind of add a few to your garden and make a hunt for the children rather than an easter egg hunt you could do a snail hunt and make lots of lovely wool snails for them to find in the garden much better for your teeth that way and much more much more magical finding a creature that you can keep and call your own okay so i'm going to take some more wool so this is the fifth piece of wool that we're going on to next I'm starting a bit higher up this time. And again, rolling that wool around. And you'll find that as your snail shell gets thicker, it's a lot easier to wrap that wool. Just keep going until I get to the end. Give that stab down. And then we're going to go for a, a sixth wrap. And the body doesn't have to be overly pretty on this on this shell because we're going to be covering it very soon with a, a lovely coloured wool bats anyway. So we want it to be even, absolutely, but it doesn't need to look super, super felted and super neat. You just want to kind of get it on there, really make sure that there's no chance of it unraveling and I'm just using my fingers to kind of hold it down splaying out my middle finger and my forefinger and then felting in between very carefully so I'm just going to add some more to this sort of top section here because this is where I want it to be thicker so starting through the middle again and then just going round down to the end and then rolling it back on itself and then just felt that down getting it nice and tight and just tuck in any kind of like fluffy ends that you might have get them felted down just going to felt that piece in there. Go careful when you're doing the, the ends of the snail shell because, again, your pipe cleaner is very close to where you'll be felting. So just go, go careful, be cautious of your needles when you're doing that. Take your time. Just checking for any kind of soft parts where it needs a bit more felting down. And then I'm going for my seventh piece of wool in a second. So it's surprising how much wool this actually takes because to look at them, they don't look that big in terms of the sculpture. But the amount of wool that you're using is it's quite, you know, it's, it's a fair bit of wool. But it's surprising when you felt the wool down, how much it does reduce in size. So all I'm doing here is I'm just going to give this a roll and I'm just going to check to see how we're looking at the moment in terms of proportions with the snail's body. So I'm just going to roll it up like it's the snail, like it's finished. 
and then I'm just going to hold it against my snail's body and have a look at it. I think it's just a bit too small at the moment, so I'm just going to add a bit more wool. Again, I'm just going to add a bit more to this top section here and get this lovely and thick. Looks a bit like a worm. It reminds me of that film Tremors, that terrible kind of late 80s, early 90s kind of that sort of yeah horror film kind of thing with the worms, the crazy worms that came out of the ground. It reminds me of that a bit. So I'm just felting all that part down and I will be needing to add some more wool to the other side as well um, because why, whilst you want this side to be thicker um, you want it to be um, a natural progression into it becoming thicker you don't want it to be like a really dramatic this is very thin oh and all of a sudden we've got a very thick kind of top half so I'll be adding some more wool to the to the other side of the of the snail shell And as we're getting thicker, I'm just going to felt that initial piece down. And I'm just going to take it down the other way now. You can see I've got some lumps and bumps, but don't worry. And because the, the fox sheep's naturally kind of quite very lofty and you do get sort of little bits of vegetable matter and things in it, you do get sometimes these kind of lumpy bits but don't worry they can be felted away and that is the joy of needle felting you know you can hide so many so many sins with the needles it's great so just making sure that everything's looking nice and even just get that all nicely combined and felted down together. It's looking good. I think we're definitely getting there in terms of the size. So that was eight, I believe. So now we're going to go for a ninth. And I'm just going to take this about three quarters of the way down the snail shell now, away from the thick part. Again, I'm just felting those initial pieces down. And then I'm just going to wrap the thinner end and give it a bit more bulk. So that's looking good. I'm just going to go back on itself, felt that down. And I think we'll be very, very nearly there then. And you can go a bit heavier now with the needles. Now you've got a bit more of a barrier between the pipe cleaner and the wool. So still be cautious, but you've got yeah that m bit more wool in between the, the pipe cleaner and your needles. So there's a bit of a an even gap that I just need to fill. So I'm just taking a bit more wool, filling that and then felting it down. And you'll see as you do yours, um, if you've got any kind of inconsistencies, any gaps, and all you need to do is just take a bit more wool and uh, wrap it round and felt it down. Always use less than you think you need because if you add too much, you can't take it away and then you'll find that you're going to have to wrap more of the wool around the rest of the shell to, to make it all even. So just start with a bit less than you need and then you can always add more after. So adding more is always easier than trying to remove. So just give it one more final felt. That is looking pretty good. I think we're going to be ready to add some colour. So I'm just going to check and make sure that everything looks good in terms of proportions. I'm just going to give it a roll just to make sure it looks right with the body. So you want to try and roll it relatively tightly. 
and then just have a look and just see if it looks in proportion with the with the other part of the snail that you've made with the body so I've, I was a bit loose there so I'm just going to try and you've really got to push your thumb in to push that that first initial thick part in to get it nice and tight a bit more tightly just to double check I think that's that's going to be good and once we've got the additional color on it'll make the, the snail shell a bit thicker again so we've made the base of our snail shell now so let's go ahead and add some color to it <laughs> 